Hey guys, this video is gonna be a little different than normal. I'm recording audio live on my camcorder and I won't be doing a voiceover. I just don't have time to do one tonight and I wanted to get this video out to you as quickly as possible. So I hope you'll forgive me for a little bit lower audio quality than what I prefer to have. I wanna talk about ER collet chucks or collet holders and uh, specifically the size and compare uh, the ER32 to my new ER20 and ER16s that I got from Tormach today. When I bought my first uh, collet chuck, which is this one, I decided to go with ER32 because it gives a really wide range of collet sizes. So this goes uh, down to eighth inch, I think maybe even below eighth, in eighth inch. And then personally I have as big as half inch, but I think they go even larger. Uh, this one, I'm not sure where it came from. It says SYIC on it. And this one is from Shars. And I've had pretty good luck with this collet chuck. My major complaint is uh, actually the size of it. When I'm using small end mills like this uh, eighth inch cutter, this is a three flute carbide with 650 stick out. Anytime you get into a small deep hole, you have a, you have a really hard time getting chips into the hole or getting chips out of the hole and getting coolant down into the hole. And so this has prompted me to purchase a couple of new collet chucks and here they are. This is the Tormach ER 20 and 16. And let me go ahead and pull this end mill out and you can see they are quite a bit smaller than the stupid ER32. Uh, for those of you who want the short answer, my recommendation is ER20. But personally, I like the ER16 and I'm going to go into why. If I take the same end mill, the uh, eighth inch three flute, and compare it to the ER32, you can see that when we're deep into a hole, we're easily, much more easily, going to be able to get chips out of this hole and coolant into it. Uh, when you're doing really small pockets like this, you don't get an opportunity to blow those chips out. And uh, I've broken some end mills and I'm pretty sure uh, that's been a major contribution. So the ER20 wouldn't really be that much worse than the ER16. Let me go ahead and show you all of these kind of side by side. So here's the ER20 and the ER32. You can see the ER32 is about a third larger. And the ER16 is half of the ER32. Okay. Uh, so I hope this gives you some idea of scale. I just don't think it's worth going with the ER32. Also, the ER20 can go as high as half inch. Now I just machined a piece of aluminum uh, with this half inch and this half inch and this one uh, outperformed it quite a bit. And the reason is this one I've discovered has got some run out and that was um, also why I wanted to get a couple of more collet chucks. Now you don't need to buy Tormach. If you want the automatic tool changer capability or compatibility, which although I don't have one, one day I would like to get a Tormach and have an automatic tool changer or maybe even build an automatic tool changer for this mill. So this is important to me. There's a company called Darkon from Canada. They also make an ER20, well, and an ER32 with the ATC compatibility. And then there's Yinsheng in China who make an ER20 with the ATC compatibility. Uh, they don't list it on their website, so you have to email them and tell them that that's what you're looking for. And I do think that I'll probably pick some of those up in the future, but I wanted to get a couple of Tormach brand ones uh, just to kind of see, you know, what the fit and finish was like. And uh, I don't know, just so I could have experience with the Tormach stuff. Uh, the Yin Shang and the Darkon are cheaper, and Darkon actually has an eBay store where if you buy in bulk, you can have pretty dang good savings over the Tormach. Now, I'm not suggesting you buy either of those, although Brad, I know you're going to suggest that uh, we buy those, but they don't do the ER16, and quite frankly, I really like the small size. Let me show you one other thing. This is the uh, ER20 next to an ER16 next to an ER32. So uh, again, you can see the ER32 just massive compared to these two little guys. And the difference between the ER16 and the ER20, it's not that big of a deal. So really, if you're just gonna buy one, again, I vote ER20. Now, one other thing that you may be thinking is, well, what about large end mills? Is that gonna be a problem? So with the uh, half inch end mill, uh, this end mill, which is one of my favorites, by the way, and I, I plan on doing a video just on this end mill because I like it so much. Uh, I can set this down to about one inch 650 stick out and that gets me right down to that 
don't know if you can see where that machined point is. Or, yeah, that ground point, you see that? Yeah, it's in the reflection. Anyway, right there is one inch, uh, about 650, or pretty close. Now, you would think that this thing being so much smaller and with so much shorter collets, again, that it would be a problem, but it's actually not. And I wanna show you what that looks like. So if you've never put a collet into a collet nut before, or collet chuck nut, whatever you wanna call it, <laughs> uh, you notice that that ring, there's a ring down in there that's uh, not concentric. It's a little fatter on the bottom by my thumb than it is up here at the top. When you put your collet in, you kind of have to uh, wobble it just a little bit and then it'll, it'll move into place. Okay. So you heard a bottom out and there's that grind. And if I take my scale here, uh, we're probably looking at 50 thousandths or maybe 60 thousandths. You, you probably can't see that. Uh, so it, it does add a little stick out on, on the big half inch end mill, but for a half inch end mill, 50 or 60 thousandths just isn't enough to really make a difference in my opinion. So I think the ER20 is going to be fantastic. So I bought ER, uh, for the ER16, I bought uh, 3 eighths, eighth inch and quarter inch collets. And then I just bought a half inch collet for the ER20. And um, I'll, I'm going to try them both out and then decide if I want to buy more 16s. And then I'll probably buy, like I said, a couple of the knockoff uh, ER20s just to kind of see what they're like. And uh, I'll link Brad's video. He actually kind of shows you uh, the fit and finish compared to the Tormox. So I probably won't do a video about that. Anyway, that's everything I wanted to talk about. Thanks for watching. If you have questions and comments, post them below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you have not. And I'll see you in the next video.